Hey guys, here's the gear. Austere August continues in spirit, even though we're in September, until I get my 31 in with Midnight Stag. I have from Chiseled Face that scent, and I have it in the uh, soap like you saw, the splash, and the cologne. Be using those later. The brush, Samogue Taj Handled, Samogue Owners Club. And he, maybe 85 uses, something like that, is what we're dealing with these days. And that's pretty cool. Get him back in the soak cup. He's been soaking for 15 minutes, maybe, so he should be good. And we hit the big landmark, a uh, uh, medium landmark, uh, 470 uses last time. And so we'll be starting a new little section of 10 dots. 471 today. Uh, did I say timeless open comb stainless steel 68 gap? I don't think I did. That's what I'm using today. And then here's my the venerable Nasset blade. That just won't die. We'll make a romantic movie. I won't give up on you, Nasset. It will be me. Yesterday was a weird lather. And for the first time yesterday, I noticed a light spot in the middle of a soap that I've used a lot of. Archibaca sold me this as a charity thing after he had used it for the whole month of austere August, maybe three years ago. And I don't know how much he used it before then, but uh, maybe we're getting to the end of this guy. Who knows? Because he may be a heavy loader, you know? Uh, I'm pretty sure one of these guys would last me about nine months. I'm gonna get my face wet, then we'll load the brush. Something strange happened yesterday. I used a different bowl. I used one that was really more made for soups and things like that. I, I didn't use my 3D bowl. The lather just washed out. Because it was a different bowl, I thought that could have something to do with it. Maybe I didn't press hard enough to where I left some water in the middle of the brush and that kind of washed out once I got onto my face. That's happened to me before. I am in a different place now than I have been all week. This has harder water, probably. Could that be part of it? So we're going to go back to my, my old bowl here. We're going to do the same loading practices that I've done, though, all week. And we're going to see if we can notice a difference. Shake most of the water off. Ten swirls. go. Any excess water, uh, soapy water, I just let drip out of the tub here. I just turn it upside down and let it drip into the bowl because that could be helpful. And the brush just doesn't show a whole lot of soap. It could have been I added too much water. With that different bowl, I may not have been as used to the feel of the lather or something like that. So we're going to try here with this bowl today and traditionally this amount of soap has needed about 15 milliliters of water to make a good lather for me. Uh, five, six passes of lather for me. So we're going to use that as a comparative benchmark. Make sure I, I filled it a little bit too much. There we go. Let's put, that's about 11 milliliters. Start with that. Almost done with 
31 shaves for Midnight Stag, and I will be moving on to other soaps. Now I'll continue to use my Nasset though, because we're just 30 uses away from a big 500 count. That's pretty cool. I found a site where you could order the Arco creams. Arco the shave stick, I've used that before. Several times. Its performance is similar to this. It's not super impressive. A lot of people rave about it, but very similar to this. By the time I push enough water in it where I like it, it kind of breaks a little bit. It just, it skips, razor skips. It just doesn't have that creamy slickness. And so then I have to back off and then the lather is just a little more dry and I don't get that, the nice slickness that I might want. And so it's, it, it, it works. It, it makes a lather that's slick enough, just like this does. But there are just so many soap alternatives out there. But my issue is there are so many guys who will praise Arco even over many of the artisan offerings. And I just think that's, at least with my lathering style, that's unwarranted. Maybe those guys like drier lathers, and I'm sure then the Arco will be an inexpensive and easy way to get to that point. Of course, Arco is uh, very divisive in the scent department, kind of like Midnight Stag. But if you let it sit around for a while, that reduces a good bit. But since Arco is so cheap, I have used it, and I've got some other videos where I have shredded the Arco and then soaked those shreds in an aftershave like Stetson, something from Walmart. And if you do it right, let it soak and stir and stuff. The alcohol evaporates. And then you've got an Arco Performance shaving soap with a non-Arco scent, with an inexpensive cologne-type scent from, the, uh, from Walmart or some big box store. Let's just go with this today. And yeah, so this, it looked nice yesterday, probably a little bit more cushy than this. And so maybe by stopping short, I've helped myself. But I could also tell in the feel of the brush. Oh, um, one of the other differences in yesterday's shave was the brush wasn't soaking. It didn't have a chance to soak in its normal way, and that really could be a lot of it. It had a lot more backbone because I couldn't find my soak cup, and just had, I tried something different. And who knows if that was the culprit. So I'm still getting medium backbone here. This brush is definitely not turned in anything floppy. Now, for anyone who likes some severe backbone, a lot of backbone, then you might claim that this one's floppy. But honestly, I, I don't really think most people would think it is. But it's very comfortable. And a lot of the tips haven't even split yet. It, it lost that kind of sparse, wiry, soft wiry uh, kind of feel to where I was feeling certain sections of it. It lost that. It's, it's more uniform now. The, the tip feel feels more like one uniform cloud instead of kind of split up sections. All right, well, we've got plenty of lather to do the job today, and this is pretty much normal. So, something else. It must not have been the water. I didn't really think it was. I've been shaving here for a long time. It must have been something else. Maybe the soaking method I talked about earlier. Uh, 471 here with the Nasset and the Timeless 68. 24-hour growth, and, and we're moving through it nicely and comfortably. You know, I've got that little bend in the corner of this blade. I think it happened around uh, 
use 225. I used to be able to tell which side I was shaving on, whether I was, like if this side had the bend versus this side, I could tell one was a little smoother. I wonder if I can tell now that we've put on 200 and something more shaves than that. All right, we'll, we'll use the next pass and try to try to figure out because I don't know which side it is right now. And load up for the next pass. So the brush definitely did turn a uh, move up a another comfort level during this month, and I was that's one of the reasons I chose this one. I'm really interested in getting a brush into high usage levels, a, a bore brush, because... Okay, I'm going to pay attention now. Stop talking about that. And pay attention to feel of the razor. See if I can detect which one... Which side has the curve in it. Oh, this... I think this feels smoother. Okay, I'm going to say that that, what I just shaved with right there is the one without the curve, the, the bend. And so the bend should be right around here. Or, and this one should then be straight. Yep, yep, there's the bend. If I glint it right in the, in the camera, shake it off. Take the water off. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. See right there the glinting, because it's bent. It it changes and angles the light differently. And so, yep. So I can still tell. That's not surprising. I was just curious if I could. When you do a marathon shave and you take a blade longer than you ever have, there is a temptation to bear down a little harder to get, get to those hairs and resist that if, is my preference. Because then when you shift off of a marathon blade back to a real one, your, your muscles won't cut you up and <laughs> give you a, a bunch of razor burn. But with me and my technique, I can switch back and forth between this nascent blade and a fresh new one and not have any issues because I focus on that light touch. Doing some work today. Moving, packing stuff. You know that going through all your stuff and you got a bunch of open boxes out. You're trying to be efficient in terms of the number of boxes you're using and so you come to a miscellaneous box and now you got to figure out places for all those things instead of just continuing the issue and just moving that one box, you know. In my case, storage is at a premium. The, the storage unit costs quite a bit, a whole lot more than it did back in the 90s when I had a storage unit. So I'm, I'm not wanting to put, you know, half full boxes in the storage unit. And so, you know, that is a whole lot of work. I, I wish it was just carry boxes to the storage unit, but nope. Got to do some thinking. And there we go. I think I'll stop with the shave today. Maybe this was my third pass. Maybe it was my fourth. I could probably do a touch up and get a couple of areas, but I'm just not going to worry about it today. It's late. I'm gonna, I still want to do another run to the storage unit, so this will do. 
But I could have kept going in terms of the lather because just like most of my uses, we've got a few passes left over from just that those 10 swirls. And per, pretty much perfect. Uh, the way I like my hydration, I can't take it as far, but this is this is about where I need to take it for this particular soap base. Plus I'm using that slurry meth, lather method that I discovered during this month. And we have the Midnight Stag Splash. It has menthol. One of the few ones that I use that has menthol. And if he ever offers it without, I'll definitely take him up on it. Because then, not only would I not experience that light burning that I get, but I would also be able to get more of the stag scent during this phase. The menthol gets in the way of that. To me. Cologne, one spray on the wrists. And then I get to smell it for quite a while as I'm doing stuff. And I've got some vanilla pipe tobacco in my pipe. And the tobacco nature of that works really well with Midnight Stag because that is uh, smokiness is one of the components of this. And so it's often a great combo. We used 18 or 19 milliliters of water for today's shave. I believe the lather is about as good as I can get this one. Unless I'm doing that kind of slurry immature lather method young lather maybe we'll call it a young slurry young lather thing i don't know um, and so that ends 471 the 471st use of the nasset today and midnight stag gets its lid put back on him and yes yes even more now we see this we, we've got the donut now and that just because of my large soap rotation my big collection it's great to have so many choices. I knew that I was going to sell a bunch off later when I figure out what I liked, but even when I sell off the decent stuff, I'm going to end up with a big collection. And that means that while you do get a lot of variety, you don't have the pleasure of finishing too many soaps. And so this is, uh, this is new ground for me. All right, you guys, that is it for today. May God bless you. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. I hope that this shave helps you in some way. Good night.